Hi, I'm Nicholas Vince. I played Kinski in Nightbreed. You are watching Retro or Bust, and this is Nightbreed, the interactive movie. Join me as we once again enter the underground world known as Midian to battle the Sons of the Free, defeat the Mask and rescue the Nightbreed. This time, in Nightbreed, the interactive movie. The interactive movie was released around the same time as the action game, and got some pretty mixed reviews from the computer magazines at the time. Amiga Action gave it an overall rating of 74%, The One scored it 75%, and they even ran a competition to win the actual mask worn by Dr. Decco in the film but ST format only rated it a 58%, however they praised the graphics and the concept of the game. So, Nightbreed the interactive movie is a completely different beast, excuse the pun, to the action game. So. I wouldn't call it a point and click adventure because um, whenever I think of point and click adventures I think of Monkey Island or Maniac Mansion um, and nor would I call it an interactive movie because an interactive movie to me is something like Night Trap on the Mega CD. So it's more of a graphical adventure. Um, I mean I don't think there's any game like it um, that I've ever played anyway. So, yeah, there are elements where you've got to use the mouse. And then there's other aspects of the game where you have to use the joystick or the joypad. So, yeah, uh, 30 years ago, I could not get past the uh, chase with Pelequin. Because um, in the manual, it says you've got to time your button presses on either your joystick or your left mouse button to when Boone's arms are at the highest point. So it's like press, 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 press. I just cannot get that rhythm right. So I ended up just spamming the mouse button as fast as I could. Uh, and now I can do it every time. I have completed this game now, um, but I did use save states uh, and I played on emulation on my A500 Mini. So there's a lot of trial and error in this game. And even if you've seen the film multiple times like I have, you still make mistakes. So, for example, when you get to the gates of Midian, there's three options. Look around, enter graveyard, and enter Midian. Um, and the right choice is to enter the graveyard, because that's when you come face to face with Pelequin. Um, if you choose to look around, then you get shot by the police um, before you get bitten by Pelequin. Uh, and if you just click on um, enter Midian then you get ripped apart by the berserkers so it's little things like that you have to know um, what to click on and when so this is the original uh, release uh, box so this would have been um, 
back in the day on the Atari ST and the Amiga from what I've read was only 19.99 now usually it was the other way around uh, you'd pay more for the Amiga version than the ST and this little case is the copy of Nightbreed that came with the Amiga 500 screen gems pack um, so it was a smaller um, re repackaged version of the game and it's funny how they've called it the Nightbreed on there and not just Nightbreed uh, there's no screenshots in the back it's just uh, the wall of skulls and the uh, they've just uh, made the manual smaller it even says on the back screen gems pack So here's the walkthrough of uh, the interactive movie. It's a pretty long walkthrough, it's half an hour long, um, but it would have been a lot longer had it not been for the, uh, the save states and uh, clever edits that I did. Um, but you, the, the game that is there in its entirety from beginning to end, so if you want to uh, use this video to just follow uh, as you're playing your own uh, copy of Nightbreed, um, so enjoy the video and I'll see you in half an hour. So you've got a nice title screen there. And there's no option screen or any um, pass key to put in. Uh, you just hit fire or left click on the mouse and uh, you start the game. select your language and we're into the game and this is the kind of thing that lets the game down these uh, silly little animations these like computer drawings of uh, the characters uh, they should have used digital stills from the film like they did with the uh, action game that would have been so much better. Um, and now this bit is the second most tedious part of the game. The first one being uh, navigating through Midian, as you'll see later on. But yeah, you basically go from um, that bottom left uh, part there. And you've got to make your way to the hospital by clicking all the intersections on the map. Avoiding the roadblocks. Here we are talking to Narcissus about Midian. And like I said, it would have been better using digitised stills from the film um, because we never actually saw Boone sat in a hospital bed like that. Now, the police roadblocks um, that appear at random, so you, you can't actually see them on the map. Uh, they just appear in, in front of you and you can either choose to ram the roadblocks or turn around and if you turn around you've got to take a different route but the chances are you'll run into another police roadblock and you'll end up using uh, up your fuel and here we are at Midian. Now this is the bit I could never get past 30 odd years ago because I hadn't a clue what I was doing but like I said you've got to uh, spam the fire button or the uh, left mouse button and press it as fast as humanly possible to get away from him.
facing Decker and the police. Just like in the movie. And then we get taken to the mortuary. And we're back on this map. So I'm not sure why I'm starting at the police station. Because um, in the film, obviously, you go from the mortuary in the hospital. Uh, the police station's in the top left now. Uh, I've run out of fuel and I've been caught again. So I've been taken back to the hospital. And that sound haunted me back in the back in the day. <laughs> what a creepy sound. So yeah, the, the police station is the building in the top left and the hospital's in the bottom right. So I'm not sure why there's a mortuary in the police station. Whether it's just a, a mistake the program has made. Uh, me. Don't need to buy gas, just uh, carry on. So, this is the third and final time we see this map. There uh, we go. Back to Midian. So here's our first encounter with uh, Dr. Decker. And you're just going to move the mouse frantically left and right and up and down to avoid the knives. And if you look on the left, that little knife icon is getting smaller and smaller. Uh, and that is basically Decker's knife supply. So you're just going to keep doing this until he runs out of knives. There we go. We've got a little cutscene here of Decker in the police station. Speaking to Eigerman. Now, there's only three pieces of music in this game. There's the title screen music, uh, the end sequence music, and uh, the music during Baphomet's sequence. So uh, I've put my own music on just to make the uh, video a bit more bearable. So now we can enter Midian and speak to Lylesburg. Now this next bit is a complete nightmare. So there's no indication on where to go. Or how to go there. I mean you've just got to keep clicking forward. Left and right. And now we've got the uh, the first encounter with a manta ray. And we've got to uh, duck or jump over the thing. Not sure why he's just stood there, like he's having his photograph taken. Now if you look at the top, uh, there's a run icon uh, and a fight icon. That's for when you come face to face with uh, one of the Sons of the Free. So you can either fight him or run away. But apparently if you run away, you end up getting lost and uh, I didn't want to do that so I always chose fight 
and it's just a little one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, fighting game so the first one only needs uh, six hits to uh, defeat him it does get harder as you progress So like I was saying, there's 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 no way of knowing where you go in this because it just looks the same. And there's like I'd say there's probably about ten different uh, shots, uh, like scenes. So you've got a left corridor, a right corridor, a corridor that goes straight on, a couple of brick walls. I mean the instructions suggest you make a map. But it's just impossible. I just used uh, someone else's guide on uh, on YouTube and just followed exactly what they uh, what they did. Now this bit, you can just jump down or fall down. But later on in the game, you have to make your way back up here. And there's two of these um, chasms, uh, and it's pretty, pretty hard to get back up there. You've got to time your jumps just right, and you've got to be pixel perfect. And uh, I think each of my attempts took about half an hour using save states, uh, which made editing a nightmare to make it look fluid. So as you can see, the uh, Sons of the Free there has got a little bit more energy than that first one. Another Manta Ray. And you can get, I think you can get bitten by those things about three times. And then after that, it's game over. So we're okay for now. Now this is another uh, little mini game where you've just got to avoid the laser sight. <laughs> and he's got to persevere until the Sons of the Free gets bored and moves on. Why would you? Why wouldn't you just run away? <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is basically it now. So traversing through uh, Midian, another uh, another chasm here to fall down, which I'll have to climb back up later. But yeah, so uh, the majority of this game is just finding your way through Midian, through this labyrinth of uh, corridors. Um, and if, if it wasn't for the guide on, uh, on YouTube, there's no way I would have finished this game. I mean, I've no idea how he figured out where to go. Because everywhere just looks the same. So we are getting closer to Baphomet now. As you can see, the, uh, the police officer's got more hats at the top. Eventually that bar will fill up as we get further on in the game. Here's Baphomet.
now we're going to find the four people that Baffer May mentioned. As well as your girlfriend, Laurie. And you can only uh, rescue her after you've defeated the mask a second time, just like in the action game. So even though you've been baptised Cabal, there's no way of changing into Cabal, like in the action game. Now here we are, with the first uh, climb up the cavern, or chasm. And like I said, this has been edited, because uh, it wasn't much fun just watching me struggle for like half an hour. I mean this makes it look easy but like I said you've got to be pixel perfect with your jumps. And there we go. And back into the corridors. I just wish there was more variety with these uh, mini games, because it was the same thing over and over again, like ducking under the manta rays, fighting the sons of the free and avoiding the laser sight. Um, and yeah, I wish there was more like appearances of uh, breed. So there we've got, I think that's meant to be Shuna Sassy, the, uh, the porcupine lady. But yeah, I mean, this uh, this place is meant to be like populated by uh, all these monsters and creatures, but it just looks so empty and derelict. But for these flying manta rays. I think we almost uh, at our second encounter with the, the mask. Oh, not yet. Now, as you can see, the uh, the health bar on the uh, Sons of the Free there is uh, at its maximum. So you just got to keep spamming that kick button. Now some of these mini games um, are easier to use with the mouse. So this for example was easier to use with the mouse to duck and uh, jump. Um, but the some of the other mini games like the, the, the fighting the sons of the free. It's easier to use a joystick or a joypad. So I had both plugged in. Uh, and the laser sight bit as well. Uh, the first one was the easy one because I just used my mouse. But the um, the next two, it was just easier to use a joy a joypad because I just uh, moved the D pad uh, around in a clockwise motion. For some reason, it was a lot harder with the mouse on the uh, the second and the third laser sight section. So there's uh, Mexico. I don't think you see that guy in uh, in the film. 
not in the versions I've seen. I know he's on a lot of the uh, promotional material. And there's the other laser sight section. So this time I'm using the D-pad, and like I said, I'm uh, going round in a clockwise motion. You've just got to persevere for about a minute until the sun's, sun of the free gets bored and moves on. Here's our final encounter with Dr. Decker. And again, you've just got to avoid his knives uh, until the rope breaks. As you can see there, the rope at the bottom of the screen. You're just going to wait for the rope to snap. And then you can rescue Laurie. There she is. Now I was surprised there was no cutscene or a photograph of Decker falling to his death. So whether they just didn't bother or they forgot to insert the photograph. And here's the uh, second and final climb up the chasm. So there are a lot of elements to this game, just not very good ones. So are the different little mini games, but they just become too repetitive. Like especially the fights with the Sons of the Free. Almost there. And now we're on to the final section of the game. Just going to find two more of Baphomet's followers. And then escape. Another Manta Ray section. Another fight with the Sons of the Free. Now what annoys me is when, when it shows the Sons of the Free's face he's wearing a brown uniform like in the film but then it cuts to this and it's just the uh, a blue blue uniform. And of course they never wore blue uniforms in the film. I mean, they should have added a bit of variety and had some of those uh, redneck characters from the film as well. And this section actually reminds me of the uh, the fighting scenes from Terminator 2. I mean, it's probably the same programmer. The way the uh, they shuffle towards each other. Very reminiscent of that game. There's a bold version of Lylesburg. 
I think Ocean just started making up their own uh, night breed during these games. So we've just got the one more uh, person to find. Which I'm sure is definitely made up because I can't remember seeing this guy in the, in the film when you, when you see him. This is the last uh, Manta Ray section. I think there is one more laser sight section. I did play this over the course of a few days using save states. If I'd have tried to play this in uh, in one go, it would have drove me mad. And there's a final uh, follower, the famous dog face. <laughs> Never seen him in Nightbreed or any of the uh, the books. In fact, I'm sure there was a guy in Doctor Who who uh, who looked like him. Now there is a punch option, uh, but I just found it easier just to kick. Because I think you can, if you, in order to punch, you just got to uh, stand still, whereas you can kick as as well as moving right. So that was the best option to fight the uh, Sons of the Free. And here's a third and final laser sight mini game. And again, I was just moving the. Uh, the D-pad in a clockwise motion. Last manta ray bit. And there we are, we've escaped Midian and completed the interactive movie. So it's not the best of uh, ending sequences, but there you go.
So that was Nightbreed the interactive movie and I can honestly say it's the most tedious game I've ever played. Um, just because of the section in Midian where you're going down corridors and you, you can't really gauge where you're going or uh, where, you, where you've been. So uh, that's why I had to follow uh, someone's guide on YouTube. Uh, I tried looking on the online to see if there was any um, like maps, you know, from old magazines. Couldn't find anything like that. So uh, yeah, after after thirty years, I finally uh, finished this one and the action game. So I can uh, finally put these games to bed. So if you've not watched part one, I'll put that in the description down below. Anyway, I'd like to thank Craig Sheffer for doing the intro for part one and Nicholas Vince for doing the intro for this video. And I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.